Let the creation begin. <laughs> wow, exciting time to learn about God creating this universe. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, teach us, Lord. Teach us how you have created this universe. We're so thankful, Father, that you have done what you've done, uh, making this world for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is word of the Lord. This is how it all began. The first day of creation, Genesis chapter 1, 3 and on. God said, I command light to shine and light started shining. God looked at the light and saw that it was good. He separated light from darkness and named the light day and the darkness night. Evening came, then morning. That was the first day. That will be the contemporary version. This is Branton's Septuagint translation from Latin. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided between the light and the darkness. And God called the light day and darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Mm. The second Corinthian Paul says about the creation, he says in 4, 6, for God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what I mean by using the Old Testament, but still finding Jesus in there. And as a man who memorized first five books of the Bible, Genesis, especially, it just comes out of his mouth. Paul, when he was Saul, uh, he didn't understand. When he was Saul, that he read Old Testament like any other Hebrew scholars, well, that's how creation began. Right? But when he becomes Christian, he says, the light that Bible talks about in the first day of creation is the face of Jesus Christ, the light of knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What he saw was what he saw was the light, and I was I had my microphone way down there. I hope it captured. What he saw was the face of Jesus in creation. Can, can we do that? See, that's, that's the point. God created. And what, how Apostle Paul read Genesis chapter 3, 3, 5 was that he saw Jesus. So let me read from King James. See if you could see Jesus' face. The glory shines. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called light day. And darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Wow. Now, instead of getting blessed like that, uh, Ellicott, Try to explain scientifically. This is what he wrote. Let there be light. So sublimity of origin is lost in our language by the cumbrous multiplication of particles. And he writes, this premier light was probably electric, arising from the condensation and friction of the elements as they began to arrange themselves in order. Uh, he's using this wonderful scientific knowledge to talk about probably the light that he saw was electric. And this, again, the, due to what is commonly called the law of gravitation or of the attraction of matter. If on the first day, electricity and magnetism were generated, the law given which created control them, we have them in two most powerful and active energies of the present and of all time, possibly two form of one and same busy and restless force. And the law does give that of gravitation, which light was immediate result. Something happened in this gravitational and God created 
And so they're trying to explain scientific, and there is actually there's nothing wrong with that. And I okay, that's kind of interesting and cute. But of course, uh, once you start believing that and make that as an absolute, then 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 you're you're making a fundamental error. Why? Because some other scientific theory could dispute that. And that by disputing your scientific theory, they may think that they're disputing the creation narrative altogether. So we need to be careful. Uh, you could you try to explain scientifically, but it's just one side of the coin. The other side is by faith. Remember, I read, by faith, we understand God created universe. And by faith, Apostle Paul is seeing the face of Jesus in this day, right? Um, and my preaching on 1993, 30 years ago, reflects that. I said, well, there's a light. What does this light stand for? Acno acronym. I said, light, L, I, G, H, T. Light, L stands for love. Love. I stands for imitate Christ. G stands for in generous giving. H stands for holy living. T stands for truthfulness. Okay. So that's result of God creating out of darkness. Why? Because darkness was, instead of love, it was lust. Instead of imitating Christ, it was imitating the world. Instead of generous giving, it was greedy. Instead of being holy, it was unholy. The un instead of being truthful, it was untruthful. So the darkness, the chaos... The world that we live in was that, and God creates light, and light is shining through the face of Jesus, and the face of Jesus, when you really understand, when you encounter Jesus, and when you are really going to die and go to heaven, is because you live in this light, in the light. You love, you imitate Christ, you generously give, you live a holy living, and you're being truthful. Not this nonsense world that, you know, right is wrong, and wrong is right, and they try to do away with sexual perversion and all this devi deviant behavior and try to make it normalized and saying it's okay and it's isn't it cool that we could all love each other and no it's well someone should draw a line so that that we could eventually come to this over the line and that's what salvation is salvation is a little line and the, the it, jesus paid with on the cross and with the blood he drew a line and whoever lives in lust, live in imitating the world, in greed, unholy, untruthful. If you constantly fornicate, you have sex with all the women that you want. I don't care if you're heterosexual and claim that, well, I'm born again. I, I believe in Jesus when I was seventh grade retreat. Well, not when you're fornicating and not feel guilty about it. You're going to die and go to hell. You know, that's what existential salvation is about. When you worry about what you to what to wear, what to wear. You are the pagan in the church. You're gonna die and go to hell. So so don't don't limit yourself to think that well I cognitively realize that I scientifically prove and I could back up biblically, scripturally that I'm saved. No existentially what's real is not in your life. So the second day happens, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of waters, and let it divide the waters from waters. What are they talking about by dividing the water from water? Well, Peter kind of mentions it, 2 Peter 3, 5. But they deliberately overlooked the fact that long ago by God's word, the heavens existed, and earth was formed out of water and by water. Wow. And in, in their concept, the water was existing on top and water and the bottom. And they believed that in Genesis 6, in Noah's time, the firmament of the water above opened up and water opened up from bottom, from top. And that's how basically the punishment of the people have come. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters were above the firmament, you see? And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and evening and the morning were the second day. Wait, wait a minute. Something's missing here. You know what's missing? 
Bible says it's the first day God saw the light. First day it was good. Third day it is it was good. Fourth day it was good. Fifth day it was good. Sixth day it was good. The second day it was good is missing. Why? Because in short four chapters later, by using water, they are going to be wiped out, punished. I told you that the salvation history book is really obsessed with salvation. <laughs> Talk about OCD book, obsessive compulsive book. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about salvation. It's all about living to be saved, living to have faith. When Noah said that God will punish, get on the boat, no one believed. They said, oh, we believe in good God. Oh, we believe that we could be engaged in all kinds of sexual activity, promiscuity, fornication, homosexuality, gambling, you know, uh, drunkenness and orgy. And yeah, we believe in good God. Oh, we're going to be saved. And God says, no, get on the boat. It make it authentic, make it real. And they didn't, and everybody perished. So in God's book, second day wasn't good. It wasn't very good, right? So when we talk about creation, I think we need to read it. If you never read Genesis creation narrative that way, Think about that. Think it in terms and see if you could see the glory of God. You could see the face of Jesus shining through this. Well, Paul did. Let me read that again. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine on our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh, shat da da ba sha la 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 ba da Let's see the face of Jesus today as we meditate on his words on the first and second day of creation. Jesus was there. Jesus created when, he, when they said, let us create man according to our image. That was Jesus there. So let's find Jesus. And let's spend this day try to live in love of Christ, try to imitate Christ. Let's be generous in our giving, of our time, our resource to others. And let's try to be holy. Let's try to be perfect and be truthful, not lying, compromising because of the circumstance, situation, because pressure in the world. And world says that you need to compromise. You need to do this. And don't, don't be an oddball. And don't, don't try to... Uh, Rock the boat. And the whole trend is that, hey, let's ordain a homosexual pastors, and that's okay. And United Methodists accepting their way, and that if you're against it, oh, you are really, uh, you're fundamentalist and all this kind of nonsense. Well, try to be faithful. I'm, I'm trying to draw the line so that the people could come over eventually. Maybe it'll take, maybe not in my lifetime. But I see that day and I said, God, I want to stand firm in my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Lord bless you. See you tomorrow.